Let's play the following scenario out in our imagination. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, one of the nine United States Supreme Court justices, dies. That just happened. The date is September 19th, 2020, and there was a presidential election on November 4th, 2020. An election which by most accounts will be one of the most contentious elections in recent American history, maybe overall American history. So with the death of a Supreme Court justice, eight justices now sit on the bench. The president, President Donald Trump, moves quickly to get a new justice nominated and confirmed. However, the Senate, the House of Representatives, mostly the United States Senate, blocks this confirmation before the November 4th election. Thus, the United States steams towards a November 4th election with only eight justices on the Supreme Court. This takes us back to the year 2000 and 2001, where Democrat Al Gore ran against Republican George W. Bush. It was one of the closest elections in recent memory. And of course, we all remember, maybe not all of us, but you can look it up on Wikipedia, the state of Florida and the hanging chads. So Florida... Don't I, I can't remember the technicalities of it, but the Florida election is extremely close. So both parties start to challenge the validity of the vote count in Florida through legal means. There were issues with hanging chads and mail-in votes. So what happens? The, the lower courts in the state of Florida make a decision that goes to the appeals courts, that goes to the Supreme Court of Florida, and boom, the decision to decide the election of 2001 hangs on the United States Supreme Court. Thankfully, back in 2001, the United States had nine justices on the court, five conservative, four considered liberal. However, one of the conservatives, Sandra Day O'Connor, was considered a swing vote. Regardless, in that particular situation, she, uh, the five of the four Supreme Court justices shut down further recounts and essentially guaranteed the election for George W. Bush. Now, a lot of people were upset about that decision. However, the Supreme Court, and I believe this is this is shown in polling, the Supreme Court generally, and I don't know about today, but uh, prior to the last four years, which has been crazy, the Supreme Court has been seen as one of the as the most respected and and legitimate branch of government. So in the United States, we have three branches. Uh, we have the executive branch, which is run by the president. You have the um, the uh, the the judicial branch, which is run by the Supreme Court, and the legislative branch. Getting these words in my head. The legislative branch, which is run by Congress. So legislative judicial and executive. Generally, the judicial branch is seen as the most respected body of the three. Believe it or not, Congress always has a an approval rating of like 20%. Okay, so back in 2001, the Supreme Court stepped in, made a decision. People were not happy with it. However, the country respected it and we moved on. However, in 2020, if a similar situation arises, there will, there could, and I don't know what's going to happen between now and election day, but there could possibly be only eight justices on the Supreme Court when the election goes down. And this election will likely be disputed within the court system. Let me explain why. Um, you know, 2020 has been the craziest year in recent memory. Um, but a lot of states, and some of this happened prior to 2020, a lot of the 50 states in the United States have gone to mail-in voting. There's been some hiccups in the mail-in voting process 
Uh, in New Jersey, there's been elections that have been held up and other elections that have gone smooth with the mail-ins. So there, the, 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 the point I'm trying to make is in 2020, November 4th, there is a very good chance that there will be an issue with the mail-in vote counting in one or more states, all right? Uh, and it's possible that a, chal a legal challenge is made by the Democrats in, in Joe, the Joe Biden campaign. It's also possible that an a, a challenge is made by Donald Trump and the Republicans in the Donald Trump campaign. One possible scenario is on Election Day, uh, re Republicans go to the uh, electoral ballot box. They go in person and they vote. And the first numbers that come out are gonna show Donald Trump leading. And then over the next couple of days, I believe there's a two to three day gap, the votes for Joe Biden will be counted and it's possible he overtakes Donald Trump. Um, even that's, that's a, 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 a very possible scenario now. And if that's the case, I think there's a very good likelihood that those the, the, the validity of the mail-in system will be challenged in one or more states. Um, there's also scenarios where it could happen from the Democratic side. Um, Perhaps the, the, the Joe Biden, perhaps Donald Trump, you know, appears to win even after the two, three days of mail-ins are counted. But there are a certain number of mail-ins that aren't counted for whatever reason or that arrive and uh, are, are misplaced. Who knows? There's so many scenarios that could play out that could lead to this election being challenged within the courts. And it's also possible that when that happens, there are only eight justices on the Supreme Court. Now, I could talk about, you know, Donald Trump's gonna try to uh, nominate a justice and get that person confirmed before November 4th. I could do a whole video on that. I'm not gonna go into that now. I'm going to assume, and I believe this is possible, perhaps even likely, but there's a good chance, I mean, greater than 30, 40%, that the country goes into November 4th with only eight justices. And then I think there's also a good chance that there are multiple legal challenges to the election. Well, how would this play out? I'm here today, Joe the lawyer, Joe Palmetto, practicing Pittsburgh attorney, to explain to you how this would play out legally. Now, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm shooting from the hip here a little bit, so I may be wrong, but I think I am mostly right. So, uh, the scenario is November 4th comes, eight justices are on the Supreme Court, and after three days of counting mail-in voting, um, one or both parties does legal challenges within, let's say, between two to five to six different states challenging the vote count in those states. Now, the way that normally works um, in, under the legal system is that challenge will have to go into a court of common pleas, okay? A trial court. And a trial court will hear facts and will make a decision on how to count the votes or on what to do with the election laws. And their decision could swing depending on what, could swing the election depending on what that issue is. Um, one thing I will say is I do believe, and I could be wrong, but I do believe that this, these challenges will work their ways through state court. So there are two avenues to the Supreme Court, and I think most people understand this. You, there are federal courts and there are state courts. If a decision goes through the federal or through the state court system, it will go to an appeals court, then the state Supreme Court, and then that can be appealed to the United States Supreme Court. If it goes through a federal court, it's basically the same. Federal courts have trial courts, which would hear the case. Then it would go to a circuit court, which is the appeals court for the federal courts. And then after the circuit court makes a decision, it would go to the Supreme Court of the United States. So you may, you may remove, if it goes through federal court, there's one less court that's going to be reviewing the case. Um, However, I don't believe, and this is the thing I could be wrong on, I don't believe any challenge will go through the federal courts because the vast majority of election laws 
are state laws. So it's going to be state laws, the state laws around mail-in voting, how votes are counted, how votes are collected that are going to be at issue here. And those would prop more properly be brought under the state courts because they are state laws. In order to get in a federal court, you, you generally need a federal question, a, a violation of a federal law. However, constitutional challenge could go into federal court. However, I still believe um, that this would move through the state courts. So let's let's drop back to our scenario. Um, one or or both parties have made, let's say, between three to six challenges in the state courts. Okay, and that and so we're talking three to six different states, maybe all with different issues. And those are going to work their way through the state courts: trial court, appeal court, then the state supreme court, then the Supreme Court of the United States. Now, depending on the issue, it may not make it that far. But I believe that these state courts they're gonna be very uh, nervous about making such a monumental decision because these judges decisions could shift the election I mean they could be deciding who is the next president of the United States so what are that what's gonna want to happen is everybody's gonna kick that up to the Supreme Court so we're gonna go with the scenario three to four of these cases make it to the Supreme Court of the United States but there's only eight justices, and we all know what that means. That means that the eight, four could go one way, four go the other way, and boom, you have a stalemate, a deadlock, okay? Because you need a majority for a decision to become law. You need a majority for the decision to become law. So four go one way, four go the other way, poof, the Supreme Court has not decided the election like they did back in 2001 with Bush v. Gore because you had a five to four. You had all nine justices, all right? So four and four is pretty scary because we, so what would happen? And why do I think this is a problem? Maybe it's not a problem, but I'll tell you why I think this is a problem. So if, a, if, a, if the Supreme Court goes four to four, boom, they deadlock, then the case goes back down to the state Supreme Court and the state Supreme Court decision becomes law. So then whatever that state Supreme Court did would be the final word. The reason I worry about that is because, like I said at the beginning of the video, the United States Supreme Court is uh, generally seen as credible, legitimate, and their decisions uh, by the greater public, the populace of the United States, general public, politicians, everyone, are accepted. When the Supreme Court steps in, people usually say, look, these are the adults in the room, right? The Supreme Court is the adults in the room. We understand the, pr the president is a highly political creature. It's a highly political office. In Congress, oh my gosh, I mean, it's, it's extreme politics. It's extreme politics. But the Supreme Court is supposed to sit there and read the law and apply the law. They are the protectors of the Constitution, all right? But when, and so their decisions are generally accepted by the United States populace. In this situation, though, if it goes 4-4 four, four and it gets kicked down to a state Supreme Court, all right, um, I believe that has a greater chance of creating unrest, possibly within that state, possibly within the greater United States, because the decision of a state Supreme Court may not be seen as as being as legitimate as the United States Supreme Court. Now, I could be wrong about that, but um, I think it's a better situation if the Supreme Court can step in on, let's say, those multiple cases and, and make decisions, all right, for the country rather than having the, the individual states um, decide those cases and therefore decide the fate of the election because a state may lean a certain way politically and therefore uh, if they go the way that's expected there could be um, a whole lot of backlash. Now it's possible that that does not occur even if the Supreme Court has to kick the case down but I believe that there's a greater possibility for uh, one one put one faction in the country or another to be very upset if the Supreme Court goes four to four and it goes back to the state Supreme Courts. Now, 
even though, let's talk about some alternate scenarios, even though you got four and four, okay, it's possible that you get a five to three decision. Now, a five to three decision would actually be, in many ways, more legitimate and powerful than a five to four because a five to three, you want that one, that side won by two, that side won by two. Um, so that's a possibility. Another aggravating factor, though, that makes this different than Bush v. Gore in, in 2001 was that Bush v. Gore was just a single state. There was only an issue in a single state. But what's shaping up here for, for 2020, and let I hope that I am completely wrong about all of this. I hope that I'm completely wrong. But what's shaping up here is challenges within multiple states. So challenges within multiple states, and they're almost certainly going to be the swing states, right? Because uh, you know Donald Trump may 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 run away with it. He's going to run away with it in Alabama, Tennessee, and the Democrat uh, Joe Biden's going to run away with it in Washington and California. But the states like Pennsylvania, where I live, um, Florida, Ohio. Michigan, Wisconsin, these are the states that are going to be highly contentious um, and we could see multiple challenges from each of those states. So court watchers, politics, it's going to be insane if that's the case, if there's some legal challenges. And I, I think it's almost inevitable that there are there's at least a couple of legal challenges due to the mail-in voting. The only way that it could, may possibly be avoided is if one side or the other wins in a more or less landslide in 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 those swing states. But even in even in elections that aren't as close as 2016, the swing states tend to be very close. That's why they're swing states, right? There's going to be a couple of states that are really close. Um, so, you know, hang on to your horses. Uh, I hope that things go smooth. If Trump gets a Supreme Court justice in there, this may all be avoided. Well, it wouldn't be avoided, but the Supreme Court would be able to speak on the issue. Uh, so it, it's going to be interesting, but I, I wanted to talk about what a 4-4 tie would do here, okay? A 4-4 tie would kick the case back down to the state Supreme Court, and then they would make the decision. Thank you for tuning in for Joe the Lawyer. I know this was a bit of a longer episode, but I just wanted to get all my thoughts out on this issue. If you like my channel, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. If you want me to talk about a certain legal issue or legal news, go ahead and leave it in the comments. Thank you.